Hi, welcome back to Meta Rules TV, where the underground meets the playground. I'm Jeff Rappaport, and you are? I'm Jason Bittner. All right. So, now, I've always considered Shadows Fall one of the hardest working bands around. Do you agree with that, and what do you attribute your work ethic to? We have no choice. <laughs> That's how it is. <laughs> All, our website used to say, like years ago, our website used to say, Shadows Fall, always on tour, because that's really how it, felt, how it felt. I mean, most of it, years ago, was just from having to do it to build the phone. Just keep that, get the name on there, get the name on constant, Constantly tour. We was, all the time, we'd be ending one tour and going right to another one. I remember right. we end, you know, ended the like, Kitty tour, like way back in 2002, when we were going right to the Avery tour, like the next day, like, you know, out in the road for like nine weeks straight. Nowadays, we couldn't do that. Yeah. They're, they're, everybody's got, you know, families now and stuff like that. There would be no, there would no way that we could physically do that and, and keep sane and, and, and still stay married and all that kind of right. stuff. But it was just that constant building thing. And, and since we were down for a while, you know, with various things, our bass player had a kid and stuff like that. Of course, we were sporadic. The economy things aren't helping either it was kind of like when we came back it was just kind of like trying to rebuild and get back the fans that you know we either lost because we had been off the radar for a little while or you know put out a record that they didn't like and then you put out one that hopefully right. they do like and all that so it's just it, that it's we're a metal man and you know yeah. as well as i do that the only way you know it's just, it's just by touring touring and being out there and none of us are getting rich doing this you know it's like we're we're at this point where it's, it's getting harder and harder to pay the bills because of touring. There's so many bands nowadays. Right. And everybody wants a piece of what their, you know, their little piece. But there's not there's not a lot of little pieces to go around in. Right. So it's just like pick and choose, pick the best tours, put great packages together so you hope, hopefully you draw. I mean, look at tonight. We got Anthrax, Exodus, Municipal Waste, and Us, and Holy Grail. And it's just sold out. Yeah. Because you got seven dust and coal chamber in the Coil. coil blocks away. So, I just realized that when I posted on Facebook today. Yeah, yeah so it's not, I mean, it's not really the same type of music, but there's still going to be a cross right, right. crowd. Yeah, and like, oh, what do I do? Would I go to this show or would I go to that show? So, it's tough. It's tough. Now, you guys uh, you guys were nominated for a Grammy. What? Well, what was it like to, to uh, you, like, what's the Grammy ceremony? I know, like, when it's, like, the metal bands. I know, I remember reading a post from, actually, from uh, Tom Mariah's wife, Sandy. Saying that they almost you know, just like to walk in the back door. Yeah. You're like, oh, you still yeah. dress up, but like, what's it like to we go to that did, ceremony? We got, we got nominated in 2004 and 2006. When we went the first time, um, it was on a War Within album. When we went the first time, we did the whole red carpet thing and all of that, and woohoo, doing all the press and all that stuff. And like, you're standing there and you're like walking by like ETV and all these things, and they're going, these people probably don't even know who the hell we are. You know, yeah. we're walking through, especially with Brian with the dreads coming through and like, but we were all like dressed up suits and stuff. Yeah. Like we cleaned up well, you know. But the only, the biggest thing I remember from that was we were on the Eve Fashion release, and there was like this, you know, this gay guy who was no offense to him, gay, but right. he was, you know, he was the, the narrator, and he's like, oh boy, look at this bunch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, look at this. But you know what? You got no room to talk. <laughs> so you know, we did that, and then we have a. Uh, you know, we went to the, the whole ceremony thing afterwards, and you know, they give the medal award away during the day. Yeah, it's not I know. Televised, none of that. You know, we did the first year we weren't going to win. We were up against Slipknot and Slayer, of course. Yeah. It was just fun to be there. You know, I met Joe Perry. That was cool enough for me. Yeah? Oh, you met Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Going to the, uh, did he do O'Sherry for you? Joe Perry. Oh, Joe Perry. Oh, Perry. Oh. <laughs> Guitar player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you've heard of him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that guy. The guy with the, with the skull. That guy. The guy was just got. But we went to the ceremony afterwards, and it just kind of, it was lackluster. We went to the Staples Center, like we're figuring, all right, we're going to the Staples Center. This is a rock party. We need to get our drink on or something, right? So I had like a flask of whiskey, like, walked up to the thing, beep, put the metal detector. I'm like, oh, shit, can't yeah. take this in. So like, we're trying to chug it outside, you know, between the bands so we can catch a buzz. I'm like, oh, we'll get beers when we go in. Go into the Staples Center. All the concessions are closed. No food, no beer, no nothing. We're like, you don't sell beer at the Grammys? I mean, yeah. what the? <laughs> they don't give it away or anything? No, nothing. There was, there was, there's a, there's a pre-show party that goes on before the Grammys, and it's free booze, food, and all that. But since we were doing all the press, that oh, so didn't really matter. We missed the whole party. It's kind of like when you get married. 
and like you know you, you're outside taking all the photos and you come in and open bars are over and you're like hey I'm getting married everybody's like, hammered except for you yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting yeah. my drink on what the fuck's going yeah. on here so the second year that we went we knew what to expect so this time you know we got all primed up we skipped the press this time we're like fuck it ain't gonna do nothing for us walked right to the press area went to the party and then went to the Grammys and I think the first year I didn't even stay for the whole thing the second year I stayed because there was good artists going to play Madonna and all the parties and so it was fun after shows afterwards. It's cool, it is what it is. You know? Let's slide down just a little bit, just a little louder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some people can't see this in an interview. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's it like uh, being the, the anthrax go-to guy? It seems like you're like, hey, hey, we need a guy. Let's let's get him in here. Like, do we need, we need Jason? It was, it's been an honor and very, 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 very cool. Um, from the first time in 2006 when, when they asked me to fill in when Charlie first had his baby, you know, that was the first time I was nervous as hell. Were you like the first choice? Uh, actually, Joey Jordison was the first choice, but he couldn't do it for whatever reason. Scott, well, what happened was Scott called Joey, but Scott didn't know that Charlie had called me in the meantime. Okay. So he had called Joey, Joey couldn't do it. So Charlie was like, well, I already called Jason. So I stepped in and I did it. And then every subsequent one after that until the end of, I, I stayed with them. So let me ask you a question. When you first started, was there poop in your pants? Uh, a little bit totally. of poop. Totally. Totally. All of them. Yeah, yeah. All of them. <laughs> very soiled. Yes. Diarrhea almost? Yes. 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 Very soiled. <laughs> um, so the you know the first time was cool, then the second time I did some South America shows with him last year after his mom passed. And then I came back in for Mayhem last year and then the Canadian tour. And they, they wanted me to continue on to Europe too. But um, unfortunately I had a Shadows Fall tour which took first priority, so I did the Shadows Fall tour instead and I recommended John Petty to that here we now, speaking of poop, have you ever had, have you ever been on, uh, like on stage and suddenly had to poop? And like, how do you handle that as a drummer? I mean, you can't really go anywhere. Oh shit! Please, please, cheeks stay together. Please, yeah. please, this is gonna be bad. <laughs> this is gonna be bad. I've almost pissed myself on stage quite a few times yeah. just from drinking so much water. I mean, like, oh man, how many songs you left? Tonight was actually one of those nights. Yeah. By the fifth song, I'm like, I got pissed. <laughs> this is only a half an hour set. <laughs> it's hard. I, I, I'm one of those guys that I, I, I can't pee sitting down. I just can't do it. I've tried it. It just I sit down. And I just, can if I have a boner. Can't. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to sit there and wait for it. I got to talk down puppies, nuns, get down boner, force it down. <laughs> As a seven-year-old boy watches. <laughs> well, wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> now. Uh, I was watching a video with you and you were like totally geeking out when you were talking about drums. You were like saying all this stuff and as a drummer I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. I'm sure Scott would know, but what what, what other things uh, make you get like all geeky about that where you're like almost like spits coming out of your mouth, you're so excited? Uh, drums. That's that's, that's about it. it. Drums? And, and probably alone time with my wife, that's probably about it. Yeah, sexy time. I'm I'm really just a one dimensional dude. Drums. Well maybe maybe my my Corvette at home. That that makes me. But yeah, what year is it? I had a 76 Stingray. Yeah, yeah. Last year the Stingray was made, I, I got one. Yeah, I loved it. Except every time I had to replace something, it was like a million dollars. Yeah. Oh, you need a new tire. It's yeah. $800. That's why I never what? drive it. Every time yeah. I take it out of the garage, it's 500 bucks. I'm like, yeah, ah, I'll leave it there. I'll sell it someday. It's automatically. <laughs> I got the stock AM radio. It's awesome. Yep. Yeah. What's, uh, so you're into drums. So what would be your, uh, your worst drum-related injury? How much time you got? <laughs> What's your worst one? That, not, that, that a series of every single one that you ever had. Uh, um, probably the most debilitating one is when my low back is messed up, when something goes out in the low back, because then it, then it affects my, my hip and then down the leg into the calf and into the foot, and obviously I do a lot of double bass intensive music, so yeah. if you can't feel your foot, that sucks. No, that's bad. So it's definitely the low back is the worst, is the worst one, but you know, Knock on wood, I'm doing all right. It hasn't been acted up, so that's a good thing. Now I heard you're playing with these uh, these guys, Toxic. What's that like, and, and, and how excited uh, are you? Slumming down the farm leagues, you know? Get out of here. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, as Mike stands there. Um, yeah, dude, I'm extremely excited about that. Um, I, I love this band. You know, I was a, I've been a fan since I saw them in 1990 opening for King Diamond. Tad and I have been friends for 20 plus years now, and like literally, I just was one day just looking through Blab and like, Toxic Reforms and Seeking Drummer. I'm like, what? So <laughs> I called Tad, I'm like, dude, what's, what's going on here? He's like, yeah, 
play. He's like, you know, I don't, you know, I'm, I got my thing now. I don't really play drums like that anymore. Yeah. I mean, he plays in a stoner rock band, so he's like, you know, those chops aren't there anymore. And you know, Josh and I were actually talking about you doing the record. I'm like, well, that's great because I was just about to send Josh a Facebook message. That's great. <laughs> so here you are. I mean, it was just, it was literally as simple as that. Like, Dude, I I want to do it. Mike and Josh came out to the second to last show on the Hate Breed Tour back in February in Syracuse when they were working on vocals one night. Played me too late and they're like, what do you think? I'm like, I'm in. Yeah. You know, and, and like for the next you didn't have to even listen to anything, did you? You were kind of... I, I really didn't. No. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, I, to, to be honest, I, I didn't. I heard, we, we were just, we just heard a story on Blabbermouth and we immediately had to talk about it. Hence that story I sent you. I'm like, I haven't heard anything yet, but I'm already, I'm already sold. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm going to it and I'm in. Yeah. It's cool. I think it's gonna it's gonna be uh, pretty awesome. Now, now one thing I noticed. Okay, now Shadows Fall has had a lot of accolades. So you've been nominated for Grammys and all that. But in, in, but as a drummer, you've received even more like acclaim and respect than even like Shadows Fall. I wonder if that ever created any any. Uh, <laughs> He's on. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any, uh, any, has there ever been any controversy or anything with your band or any like animosity for that? Like, Oh, Jason, he's modern drummer number one and all that. No, no, not at all. And if anything, that that should fuel them to to enjoy the fact that that's happening for me. Because anything that happens for me is for, is for the band. Right, it really right. is. And anything that's happening with me in the drum world isn't happening without them. I mean, there's a reason why I won those accolades is because I was playing in that band. Right. If I wasn't with them, that wouldn't have happened. So I'm never like, I never go, oh, yeah, oh, pat myself on the back, I'm this guy. Because without the four of them, I wouldn't have been there in the first place. So, and it is a popularity contest, too. Yeah. You know, whoever's popular at the time, that's when that happened. That period in time, 2004, 2006, you know, was like a really big, big time for me. MD Fest and all that. And, you know, everybody, it's one thing that, you know, my good friend John Tempesta told me years ago. He's like, everybody gets their time. And when you get your time, just enjoy it. Okay, so I did. On a more serious note, what are the what are the best uh, cleanliness techniques to be on a tour? Sometimes you can't get a shower. What are your ears to keep it fresh and smelling? Normally, it's really nice. Normally, we'd be in a bus, and and I'd probably be four days without a shower right now. Actually, no, I would have showered because there's actually a shower here in the LA. So you're, really, you luck out. But since this this tour, we only did we're only doing the last six shows. We said we're not going to waste any money on a bus. We'll just do it a van. You know, it's only it's short drives. The longest drive we had was six hours, and that was the first show. We're like, this is easy. We'll do it in a van. You know, that way we come home with with a paycheck for once. Right. But when you're in a van, you get a hotel room every night. So fortunately, we get a shower every day. So that's the nice. only good thing about a van tour is you actually do get the shower every day when you get a hotel. That's but if it. not, baby wipes. Baby, baby wipes. wipes. Baby wipes and axe. What do you use axe? Oh, yeah. so you're like a 12 year old boy. Let me explain it. You think it's like a French whore when I walk. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, baby wipes are awesome. Uh, I actually got scored on baby wipes from Will Smith. Not, I don't know him personally. I just saw him. Him and Michael Bay were talking in an interview one time. They were saying how they use baby wipes like on a daily basis. Your ass will never itch again. It's a beautiful thing. Just like on a regular basis, not just when you're on tour. Like I don't go on tour. I, 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 I bet you Will Smith's got someone to wipe his ass with the baby wipes. Michael Bay. <laughs> Yeah. Or I guess the last and the most important question I have for you is are you honored to appear on Metal Rules TV and why? Of course. Because you guys are funny. Except you're not drinking beer right now like I don't normally have, are. I don't have any here. You're missing the couch and the beer, so I have to go down and do a special You're more than welcome to come by for the uh, couch session. I, I can't drink anymore. Well, you come by and we'll no, have No more out. drinking. I haven't had a drink in almost six you months. Pizza, whatever you're drinking there. Coffee? Ice coffee. coffee, yeah. I'm keeping fueled for the two-hour drive I have ahead of me later on yeah. to Jersey. <laughs> no, Connecticut. Jersey, Connecticut. I used to live in Costco. Where that is? No. It's in Connecticut. We're going near Old Greenwich. We're going up. Yeah, we're going right outside of Greenwich. We're going to be going to Stanford tonight. Okay, and now is your chance to uh, plug any anything that's coming up, any releases or anything you'd like to talk about? Let's see. Aside from the Toxic Record, which hopefully will get our asses moving and hopefully get that thing together this summer, I hope. Um, got some clinics coming up this summer with Guitar Center. I'm doing uh, the COSA Festival in uh, Vermont, which is a big percussion festival that's in August. And uh, yeah, Shadows Fall doing a couple of the Ride for Dime parties this year too. I think we're doing Chicago cool. in July and uh, one date in Dallas in August. 
Right. Cool. And aside from that, I'm just going to be working on the record with these guys and actually enjoying my my summer off. This is going to be the first time I've been home for quite a while. Why don't you come I in here for that. one second? Oh, no, there's lots of rehearsal time. This see summer you guys. <laughs> so we can see you guys on camera together for the, right. for the first this time. First time. There you go. Toxic. Toxic. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, guys. You got it. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. While we're at it here.